Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a MIDI keyboard controller with Reaper. Now the purpose of using a MIDI keyboard controller is so that we can record or trigger MIDI sounds in our computer, whether it be a piano or a synth, a drum machine, or even just to control any parameter available inside Reaper. Now there's most likely going to be two different options to choose from, either a USB keyboard that plugs directly into your computer, or an older keyboard that only has MIDI inputs and outputs available. In which case, you'll need either an audio interface that has MIDI connections or a dedicated MIDI device. But once it's set up, it should work the same. Some MIDI keyboards can be pretty small with unweighted keys, while others could have as many as 88 weighted keys with piano-like action. But once again, once we set this up, they should behave in a similar way. You'll start by reading the instructions that come with your unit. Some require drivers or installers to get them working, while others are simply plug and play USB devices. But definitely check out the manuals that come with your unit and follow them and install anything necessary. Once everything is installed and plugged in, we can open Reaper and go to our preferences. Up here in the options menu and go down and choose preferences. Then we'll go over here under MIDI devices and we should see our devices show up. The inputs up here and the outputs down here. As you can see, mine aren't showing up because I have them unplugged. Let's plug them in and let's choose reset or MIDI devices. And now they show up. The first one is an 88 key MIDI controller. And the second one is an audio device with MIDI inputs that I'm gonna use for vintage keyboards that don't have a USB connection. Now to set these up, we can either right click and choose our options over here, or we can just double click them. We could change the device name or create an alias. I would recommend if you wanna change the name just change it over here. I'm going to call this MIDI Keyboard 88 Keys, and it'll show up in Reaper that way. Then I'm going to enable the input from this device. We could also enable for control messages, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll show you that in a bit. Then I'll do the same thing for this one. Enable it and rename it Vintage Keyboards. Now both inputs should show up in Reaper. And we do the same thing for our outputs right here. We can enable them. We could send clock to that device, which makes more sense if we're dealing with a sequencer or a drum machine. For this, we don't need it. But I'll set it up for both of them. So now if we close this and create a new track, we could set up our MIDI inputs right here. My 88 key keyboard, I could set it to all channels, turn on input monitoring and put it into record, and play the MIDI keyboard, and it's going to show up right here on the meter. Or we could choose my vintage keyboards that are plugged in to my audio interface right here. And if I play that keyboard, it also shows up right here. Or we could choose both right over here, all MIDI inputs. And now if I play either keyboard, it could become the input for this track. So now we can put an instrument on this track and play it. Let's go to the effects and let's choose instruments and choose an instrument to create some sound. I'm going to choose Rhea Synth as it's a synth that comes with Reaper. I'll readjust the Sawtooth mix and it'll sound like this. 
Now, when I use a synth, I usually like to add an EQ. So let's add a re EQ after it. Right over here, let's remove all the bands except for one and switch it to a low pass filter. Then I can readjust this while I play it. Now, if I want to adjust this in real time, we can use our MIDI controller to do that. We can just select the parameter and go up over here and choose Learn. And now we could touch any fader or knob on the MIDI controller. But Reap is not responding to what I'm doing. That's because we have to turn on Control. So let's go back to our preferences and let's choose my main keyboard and enable it to input for control messages. So now we could touch it again, choose Learn, move my fader, and Reaper's going to learn that fader or knob. So I can adjust it in real time. And we could do the same thing with every fader or knob on our MIDI controller, on any of them, and adjust any parameter or plugin in Reaper. Now, if we want to set up outputs for our track, we can go to the routing and go over here to MIDI hardware output. And our devices should show up here. Either our keyboard, which doesn't have an output, or my audio interface that does. So I could send this to my vintage keyboards and play the MIDI from Reaper into that keyboard. And then create another input over here to set up the audio into that track. So that's pretty much it. That's using a MIDI keyboard controller with Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.